Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to install OctoScreen on your Pi screen. I've got the 7 inch version here. Uh, it's pretty much going to be the same for any version you have as long as it's connected properly. Uh, the dependencies are going to be you have to have the screen set up right, which I did a video covering the install that I'll link to below, and you have to already have OctoPrint installed, which I did a video covering that as well, and I'll link to that below as well. Um, the process overall is pretty easy and it gives you a nice interface into Octopi if that's the main tool you use. Uh, obviously you can still connect to it from your browser, but if you're at your printer and you want to just tie into it really quick, uh, having the screen here is really nice. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or run into any issues, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we need to do is A, make sure that everything is powered on. And as you can see here, that it is, so it's all working right. And now we need to SSH into it uh, to install some dependencies. Uh, pretty much everything we're gonna have to do from this stage forward is all gonna be through PuTTY. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump over to the computer. And all right show. guys, so I'm here at the computer. I have the OctoScreen GitHub page up, uh, which is gonna be where most of the commands we need to run are from. Uh, first thing we want to go ahead and do is uh, pull up PuTTY or your SSH client and connect to uh, the actual Octopi. So here I've got PuTTY and I'm using my IP address. Uh, so you either need to use octopi.local if that works with your setup or your IP address. Uh, so I'm just using my IP. And then I am connecting. Um, your username is Pi and the password is raspberry unless you changed it, all lowercase. And by the way, if this is a permanent setup, I do recommend you changing that password. All right, so let me, let me just push this off to the side real quick. Uh, actually, before I do that, first thing I like to do when I connect is just do an update. So I'm going to do a sudo app get update. And that's just going to uh, search for updates. Now it's asking for the password again. So it's just Raspberry. Yeah, again, this is just searching for the updates for everything that's installed on the Linux box. All right, that's done. That didn't take long. Like I said, that is optional, but I do recommend you doing it. Now let's go ahead and go over to the web page. We want to scroll down to where we get to the install instructions. There's a couple commands we can just literally copy paste from here so it makes it easier. Uh, the first one is this one right here. It's installing our dependencies that are needed. So we'll just copy that and just paste it. And that's going to run through. It's going to ask you if you want to install all of that. You want to hit yes and then hit enter. All right, now that those dependencies have been installed, next thing we want to do is go ahead and install the two OctoScreen packages. So the first one is this. We'll just go over here and run through that. And then the second one is this one. We'll just go ahead and paste that as well. And
All right, now that that's done, next thing we want to do is restart. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make a note that if your screen orientation is such with the mouth that it's reversed, uh, you are going to want to change that. You can do that by going into our config.txt file. So if you do sudo uh, nano slash boot slash config.txt and hit enter, uh, if you go down to the very bottom of this, uh, you can just uh, enter lcd underscore rotate equals two and then save this. Um, that will rotate the screen. Now I with my mount, I don't need to do that, but I know a lot of them do, so I wanted to show you. So I'm going to remove that, but that's what you would do. So you'd save that and then you'd go through the reboot. So I'm just going to delete that and actually I'm going to exit out of this without making any saves. All right, now all we need to do is reboot and then it'll boot back up to the screen and I will go in and go back down to where my printer is at and show you that. Right, so you'll reboot with sudo reboot oops now. All right, guys, so OctoScreen is installed now, and uh, you can see the new interface. Here you've got your print. You can go through your SD card or OctoPrint. Uh, you can control all of your filaments, your extruder. You can um, basically do everything you can here that you can from the UI. It just gives you that really quick interface. And then if you hit these, it's going to go ahead and preheat to whatever your defaults are set, which all of that is configurable, but it's just one button preheat, which is nice. Um, I have them set a little bit high right now, so I don't want to do that. But like if I just hit the nozzle, it's going to go to 210 and the bed is going to go to 100, which obviously I don't want. So I'm going to turn that back off. Uh, but it just gives you that quick interaction. So if you're used to using Octoprint, it doesn't have that delay because it's directly connected. Uh, so it's actually really quite nice, especially if you kick off a print from the web browser and want to check on things here. Uh, it works out pretty nice. And you also can go through your bed leveling and then you have all of your actions here. So you can set your temperatures, you control the fan and such. Uh, so that's a quick overview of what this screen can do. And if you're using Octoprint, it's really a nice addition to it. All right, guys, so that's how you install OctoScreen. Uh, if you use Octoprint often, uh, it's definitely a nice enhancement to it. It gives you the quick interface in case you're downstairs or if your printer's away from your computer and you want to see what's going on. You have all of the controls right there. Uh, the install process was really easy. You just had to run a couple commands, which I'll link to in the description below. And again, I'm going to reference the GitHub page as well. Uh, so all of that is there. If you run into any issues or have any questions about the process, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.